Hello guys, welcome back. Uh, in this video, we are going to study combined cycles. So we're going to start by recalling what is the actual, the ideal ranking cycle. We recall that we have our uh, QIN that comes from a boiler. Remember that we have our QIN that comes from a boiler and it has uh, that's the heat that we need to, to provide, and it has influence in the efficiency. The greater the QN it is, the lower our efficiency, right? So in order to improve our efficiency, we need to do something with this QN. Now, let's give a brief step back, step back to uh, the Brighton cycle. In this Brighton cycle, you recall that we have uh, high temperatures, right? It, you can read here, uh, what is my cursor? The temperature of the exhaust gases leaving the turbine is considerably higher than the temperature leaving the compressor. So we have high temperature gases. Now, let's go back to our um, ranking cycle. So going, coming back to our ranking cycle, we mentioned that we need to take um, in account the QIN. So combining these two, we can uh, say I am having gas turbines that are used for uh, producing power. Uh, one of the things that I have out of that turbine is hot gases. In the other hand, we have a vapor turbine that needs heat to change phase. So if I combine them, I will have a combined cycle. So in this combined cycle, what I am doing using the gases that I have the outlet to transfer heat to the steam cycle. So I don't need to have a boiler. I am using something that otherwise I will be just expelling. If I draw it in a TSA uh, diagram, you can see that we only have one QIN. This QIN comes from the combustion of gas. And the second QIN comes from the Brighton. Now, that's what the theory said. Is that true? Let's check. If I visit uh, any supplier, in this case I choose GE, and I look for this turbine, which is gas turbine to produce electricity, this, in, in this case, electricity will be 50 Hertz. Uh, I can see that uh, I can go to product specs, and I can keep scrolling, I can see that the exhaust temperature of the gases is 629, a lot of energy, millions of BTUs per hour. Remember the BTU is a British thermal unit. So that means that I can use it. Now, uh, in your book mentions that we have something like 50%. Nevertheless, uh, the world record was established last year April 2nd, 2016, a 62.22 efficiency, okay? And we use a combined cycle. Let's see short video. Um, so this is the record that we have. Let's uh, see a quick video on how combined power works. My name is Jackie, and I will be your guide throughout the plant tour. Does anyone know what a combined cycle power plant is all about? Well, let me put it this way. The plant is a cleaner and efficient way of producing electricity. It even captures wasted heat and uses it to increase the plant's electrical output. Now please follow me, and let's move towards our first stop. In front of us, you can see a gas turbine. 
This one is our 9HA. This turbine weighs approximately 400 tons, almost the equivalent weight of a fully loaded Boeing 747 aircraft. A gas turbine, the heart of a power plant, compresses air and mixes that air with fuel, which is ignited. The higher... We know that. That's our Brighton cycle. Our fuel mixture moves through gas turbine blades, making them spin. The fast spinning turbine drives a generator that converts the spinning energy into electricity. Behind the gas turbine, you can see another key component, the Heat Recovery Steam Generator, HRSG. Its mission is to capture exhaust heat from the gas turbine that would otherwise escape through the exhaust stack. Thanks to the captured exhaust heat, the HRSG generates steam where it is then delivered to a steam turbine, making even more electricity. Pretty cool. That is, guys, the little rectangle with the two um, lines. That's a heat exchanger. Huh? We are now... Approaching our, our next stop, stop the, the steam turbine. Can, can you see, see those huge bundles of pipes running out of the HRSG? HRSG? It, it is, is the main steam piping, which, which brings high temperature and high pressure steam from the HRSG, HRSG to the steam turbine. turbine. Here we are, the steam turbine. This piece of equipment uses steam to spin the generator. Similar to the gas turbine, the high temperature and pressure steam passes through the steam turbine blades, turning the generator to make more electricity. Here we are at the generator. This is where the magic happens. The spinning of the gas and the steam turbines drives the generator rotor to spin, converting mechanical energy into a so we that that steam turbine that we just described is the ranking cycle, right? Electrical energy. Okay, okay folks, let's, let's continue, continue our, our tour. tour. Running out from the generator is the bus duct, which, which conducts generated electricity from the generator to a transformer, enabling the electricity to be sent to the power grid, to which we connect our home, schools, businesses, pretty much everything. The last stop of our plant tour is the control room. Everything you just saw is being monitored and controlled in real time, right from this very building. Farewell. Well, folks, this, this wraps up our tour of GE's combined cycle plant. It was a pleasure having you here, and we hope you enjoyed the experience. See you next time you flip on a light switch. So, what we have we just described is how the combined cycle works, and what we are going to do now is how do we analyze it. First, let's see what your book says about the combined cycle pulse, everything that we just described. Uh, the other thing that I will not check is that it said efficiency of thermal, uh, thermal efficiency is 50%. We are way above that, or 62%. And uh, so let's see uh, what the problem now looks like. Going back to our analysis, so now we're going to take a closer look to our um, heat exchanger because it is the common point that will help us to close the analysis. So we notice that we have two inlets and two outlets. It's a heat exchanger. So that heat exchanger still complies with first law of thermodynamics. So we start by writing our equations. We have Q in. So we know that this is um, a steady state. So we can make some simplification. So 
even though we have a heat exchanger, we want the heat to be transferred from the gas of the Brighton cycle to the water in this ranking cycle. For this reason, we don't want heat going in or out the heat exchanger. We don't want any heat gain, so Q in and Q out is zero. We also want a rigid heat exchanger for the reason we don't have volume work change and work in or out will be zero. All the summations of in, so it's mass flow rate of air eight plus mass flow rate of steam H two minus minus air mass flow rate of air H nine minus mass flow, mass flow rate of steam H three. We're analyzing this heat exchanger. This should be equal to zero. So if we uh, combine similar terms, we will get mass flow rate of air H8 minus H9 equal the mass flow rate of steam H3 minus H2. This is no surprise. It's just getting uh, first law. All the energy that this, the air is releasing, that what in my system will be Q out, in my Brighton will be Q in because that's what the, the, the ranking will be gaining. The rest of the system, we uh, simplify just the same. So in the next video, we will see a demonstration using a problem, solving a problem. Okay, guys, thank you. And I hope that this video, although it's a little bit sloppy because I'm using a new software, um, it's useful.